the sun sets behind me. I have been to town, so I got in. It wasn't that late last night. And, you know, for puppies till almost midnight. And then I got back up at 6. And so I laid back down. So good. I slept from 9 till 12. It was wonderful. Kind of got caught back up in my own bed, right? So I ran to town to get some things for the graduation party this weekend and it just reminded me of a funny story. It's funny now, it was not funny then. So my husband and I have been married 40 years this summer and my first attempt at uh, entertaining or having people over. So we lived in this trailer house and we were <laughs> We were so poor. We lived in his parents' cow pasture on this, I don't know, 100 acres or something, part, part of their big farm. And our first year, we did not have an air condition. And I don't know how we survived because we couldn't have afforded the electric bill if we had had an air condition. Uh, it's a metal box and there was no shade. And we would raise the windows and put fans in the windows and we we did survive. So that plays into this story. So he worked at Sears at this time. This was before we had kids. We didn't have kids for four years. So and when we had kids, we got a little window air conditioner. Uh, so we are used to, I had cattle when I married him and brought some over with me, and so we were spoiled in that we typically always had a beef in the deep freeze, although we didn't have a deep freeze, I think our beef lived in Granny's deep freeze, because she had a big deep freeze at the time, and so I had thawed out some steaks, and I wanted to do a special dessert. So I did red belly cake from scratch, which went fine. But the icing, you had to, this icing you had to cook, like a cup of butter, a cup of milk, and a cup of sugar, and then something to thicken it, and then you whipped it with, I don't know, this was 35, for, this was before I had kids, so my daughter's 36, so this was a long time ago. She turned 36 yesterday. So, I, it was beautiful. Red velvet cake, beautiful fluffy white icing, right? But they didn't tell me to put it in the refrigerator. And you'd think that I would have known to do that, but I didn't. And so I left it on the counter overnight, and then they came the next night. So it had been out 24 hours in the very hot house. And I don't really think it was quite summertime, but it was, it was not cool. It was hot. So the, I don't even remember this couple's name. They never came back. So we ate and everything was okay for a couple of hours. And then they said, we need to leave. And about that time, I'm like, I need to go to the bathroom. So we did have two bathrooms. We had one in the master bedroom. It was a, it was a big trailer house. And then we had a one with the washer and dryer and the shower tub combination, right? I am glad we had two bathrooms. I went to the bathroom for two days, which is really good in a way that you're, I didn't vomit. I did not vomit. I just couldn't get off the toilet. <laughs> Neither could my husband. I felt so bad. It was about midnight. I'm thinking those poor people, I hope they made it home before they missed their britches. I don't think he talked to my husband the next day at work. I don't think Tim went to work the next day. I think he was so sick he had to stay home. It's not funny, but anyway, safe handling of food, right? It matters. I remember years ago, there was this kind of uppity trout restaurant. It's not there anymore, up in Rogers. And someone had cut meat, and I don't know if they were cutting fish or steak, and then they cut a watermelon. 
and it made some people sick. So this is what I know about digestion too. Not that I got on here to talk about digestion. One person, there be two people can eat the same food and it can make one person sick and another person not, depending on your digestive system. How can how good how good are you at digesting stuff, right? How healthy is your tract? So I do know that, but I, I don't know why that even popped in my mind. But anyway, I'm very excited about the party. So she's invited 50 people, and um, I was a little bit overwhelmed today. And I thought, God, have I bit off more than I can chew? I've never cooked for 50 people. And he said, No, you know how to do every piece of this. So. We're doing a fruit pizza. It's very simple. It's a cookie cookie dough, and you don't have to do it round, but you can if you want to do it pizza, or you can do it long and square. And then you don't you don't overcook it. You make it real soft, and then you put um, everything we're making has cream cheese in it. About pounds and pounds of cream cheese. So you put cream cheese. Uh, powdered sugar and whipped cream and then you put that on your cool cookie and then you decorate it with fresh fruit so I was getting some fresh fruit like raspberries and strawberries and blueberries and uh, kiwi which I'm trying to get my kiwi ripe I should have got all this Monday and here it is Wednesday so anyway the kiwi the green and the kiwi just makes it look so pretty but you want your kiwi to be sweet and ripe then we're, I'm doing uh, red velvet cake, cupcakes and um, carrot cake, cupcakes, and a double thing of walnut brownies and pinwheels. We practiced our pinwheels the other day. I posted a picture on my Facebook page. Um, oh, so this was funny. I'm at Walmart. So I went to Sam's first, got a bunch of stuff, then I went to Walmart. And I'm walking around, and I've got one sheet of paper, but I don't have my other with the menu on it and I'm like, I can't find it anywhere and this older gentleman he said ma'am ma'am I'm like what did you got something stuck to your rear end <laughs> with my sticky notes with my menu so I oh thank you I lost it <laughs> couldn't find it but it was sticky it was like those sticky things so it stuck to me I guess I was I don't know what I was doing with my page it got it stuck to my bottom Anyway, and so I thought, you know, we walk through life sometimes with a lot of stuff stuck to us and we don't even realize it. I just want to send to him. I remember this, hearing this one lady's testimony. She said, I don't know if she was at a conference or what, but she, this was back when everybody wore pantyhose, okay, in the 70s. She got up and she had put on a pair of slacks that she had wore the day before because she only had them on a couple hours. And she's walking around town and she's feeling fine because everybody's looking at her. And she said, she looked down and she had a piece of pair of pantyhose hanging out in the back of her slacks. And that's why everybody was looking at her. So she's laughing at herself, right? She's laughing at herself. And just the thought of in life, as we're. I heard someone else say sometimes when we get married we drag all this luggage all this baggage that's not good baggage into our marriage and it's no wonder we can't take off and have a wonderful marriage because he has baggage and she has baggage and anyway we need to put a marriage retreat on at our church they hadn't had one since COVID so you know what I love about a marriage retreat is that you get all these married couples together and they see, hey, I'm not the only one. I'm not the only one that gets angry or gets in the flesh or I'm not the only one that feels isolated or feels lonely or I'm not the only one. that So things that you take away from a marriage retreat is tools, right? Tools to not just to get what you want from your spouse, which it is good to be able to express how to 
come together and to communicate in a, oh my gosh, you should say the way that Tim and I used to fuss and fight. It was, it was bad. It wasn't as bad as both of our parents said that we came from such horrible dysfunction. I mean, I remember my dad putting all my mom's clothes in the bathtub and threatening to burn them. I was probably about four or five years old. And she's hysterical, you know, screaming hysterically. Which, I probably would just punch my husband's lights out if he said he was going to burn all my clothes. So you can see that we both came into this marriage 40 years ago with not a lot of good tools to resolve conflict and to build each other up and to know how, when you're angry, not to tear each other down. And because, remember one marriage retreat, I took away, you're not my enemy. And to remind yourself that your spouse is not your enemy. Um, so it was really good. And just to have examples, although this was me years and years ago, I would look at these other couples and I would actually be jealous of their marriage or relationship, right? Well, why can't we be like them? Well, you don't know exactly what them are like behind closed doors. You just see the face they present to you in church or in public, right? So, but having said that, we do want to be the marriage that brings God glory in public and in private. We want to be the marriage that encourages other people to believe that marriage is a good thing. So, yeah, our kids suffered a lot of brutal trauma watching my husband and I work out our differences. Anyway, I was like, that's brutal. My husband says every Veterans Day when the preacher honors, would all the veterans please stand up so we can honor you? He says it's all he can do to remain seated because he felt like he's been at war for years in this marriage. Anyway, it's not funny. It's funny, but it's not funny. So, As we both submit to God, it's... I wouldn't say it's just better, it's good. You know, we've worked on ourselves. You don't have to work on your marriage, just work on yourself. So I tell these young people that want to get married, oh, we love each other. Yeah, well, getting married is just God's grow-up plan for you because you can't stay happily married and not grow up and not be more selfless, less selfish. That's what marriage is all about. And then, then, if you have the blessing of having children where the nights are long and the years are short, um, they help you grow up more because they can't help but be selfish. They're little tiny bundles of selfishness because they need, they're needy, need. Anyway, I was very glad to have children, and I adored my children until they got to be teenagers, and they didn't like each other, and they fought constantly, which, you know, it's not that I can blame them. What kind of example did they have? Two parents that sometimes fought constantly, and so I remember Mama Joyce saying this, and this really convicted me. She said, talking about being in strife, and I believe that strife can be a pattern. It can also be demonic, and... That is one thing that we've really torn down in our marriage, and that strife. And she said, or, or she was saying, peace is not the absence of not fighting. She said, strife can be just, doesn't mean that you're saying ugly things or being in someone's face. You can just harbor this resentment in your heart towards your spouse, and that can be strife. And I was like, hmm, you know, I thought I needed a star for just not fighting back or being whatever, spitting in his coffee and using his toothbrush to clean the commode. I'm giving myself a star, right? <laughs> I promise I never did that. Only because was it in Galatians 6 that says, whatsoever a man soweth that shall he also reap? It's the only reason that I never did some of those things. Not because I didn't want to. But this one marriage retreat that we went to, we learned your spouse is not your enemy, okay? Especially if you're in a covenant with them. You know the baby cats. Uh, 
So I don't know why I got off. That's not what I intended to talk about marriage. But I can tell you this. If you do the work. If you do the work. You. You can't change someone else. But you can change yourself. And in changing yourself. This is one thing I pray. Typically every day when I ask for grace. I pray. God make me the wife. That my husband needs. And desires. And that's a powerful prayer. Because <laughs> sometimes he's like, why did I marry you? No, he's never said that to me. But I know he's thought it before, right? So one time he said, why do you have to be so difficult? No, actually, this is what he said. I had this. Harley can be a little bit difficult. But I, the hor- my riding horse that was my personal horse before Skipper he was part Andalusian and he was one of the most difficult horses I ever worked with but he was wonderful in that he would back into a trailer and he would bow and he would jump up on a stump and he would do all these things I asked him to do but he just had a lot of emotional trauma I guess I don't know probably for me um he was very difficult. In fact, he put me in the hospital one time, and my husband said, why, why, why do you, why do you like these difficult horses? I said, I don't know. Why did you marry me? And he never said another thing. He never said another thing. So, somehow, this is God's, um, here, Granny's throwing stuff to Peanut. She thinks he's going to starve to death. Granny, he's not going to starve to death. Yes, he is. <laughs> I hate him every day. I want him to lose weight. His neck is still hard. You can feed, give him a flake of hay. Did you give him a flake of hay? I scooped up some around there, but I mean, I didn't get it. Yeah. But I had some of my grass for my flowers. Sure. But I didn't have very much this time. I've got plenty of hay. He can have a flake of hay. I didn't give him a full flake. I just got okay. a little bit. Okay. Sure. They'll get to going now it's hot. And the grass was the grass was coming up and the the dirt was hard. Mm. So I dug around it. Okay. And I got some of my topsoil or my potting soil. Okay. So I put some of that around it. Say hi. Say hi to everybody. <laughs> Who are you talking to? The world. Give him a flake of hay and I'll come put Harley up in a little while. I gotta go put my groceries up. Well, he'll be okay tonight. Oops, I lost my mic. Oop, my husband's calling. So, I wish you all all well at your marriage and uh, for more tips, <laughs> just reach out.